I get out of the car, I look at the church, I turn back around to say, thank you, I really appreciate that, and he's gone. Physical encounters with spiritual beings. I didn't see an angel, but I physically felt an angel. The reality of angels and demons. When we go to those houses, even if it's pretend, even if it's make-believe, we are emulating darkness. With prophetic teacher, John Paul Jackson. Everyone has a story. Did you know that dreams are God's way of getting you to your future? He knows what's coming and He's going to help you get there. Every life has something to share. The grass is not greener on the other side. There's stickers from tragedy to triumph. Your memories will always be of the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. This is real talk about real topics that will change your life. There's one thing I would like to tell you, and that is God is truly a healer. He has been for me. So grab a seat and join the conversation. This is Joni Tabletop. Angels, demons, what are they? What are they not? Today we're looking at the spiritual realm and dispelling some of the misconceptions about the different beings associated with it. And we'll talk about what this means for believers. Very interesting subject. Joining me around the table is Kelly Lynch. How are you? I'm great. Good. How are you? This is an interesting subject. Very interesting. I'm always just so intrigued by the Word of God, and it's like the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. Do you feel that way sometimes? Yes. We've been bombarding him with questions already. <laughs> so and a special treat today, my Yay. sister Christy Lowe Yay, is here. My sissy. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I know you love having John Paul Jackson for a guest today. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you disappeared into the green room and I was like, my sister's in there talking. I know this. I know this. And my dear friend, Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm oh, great. Thank you. I love your earrings today. Well, thank you. Very nice. Very, Very cool. nice. <laughs> thank you. And John Paul Jackson, yeah. always good to have you. Thank you. Well, there are many misconceptions about the spiritual realm. So today, I invited John Paul to come and help us better understand angels demons and the role they play in heaven and on earth. There's a lot of there's a lot written about angels. I mean to the fact that people almost worship angels and I know that is not biblically sound doctrine, is it? Yeah, I think the church in Colossae must have been going through that as well because Paul exhorts them in, in Colossians chapter 2 not to mm -hmm. worship angels and not to be too caught up in all of that. So mm -hmm. it's great to have angels and it's great to know about angels. Uh, it's great to understand why they're here, their, yeah. their purposes and their functions, but uh, we cannot make them into deity. They are created beings and they're here for a specific purpose, but they're not God. They're not omniscient, they're not omnipresent. No. Yeah. And they're not omnipotent. omnipotent. They're not immutable. Yes. Right. That's only God. So for those who are maybe watching and say, could you explain a little bit of the difference between the origin of angels and demons? Where did they both come from? God created them, the Bible says, before the world was ever formed. Yeah. Because it says when God formed the world, the angels rejoiced at uh, at what God had accomplished. So we know that Wait, they, God created demons? They, well, God created angels. angels. Okay. Demons have a, a, are a whole other source, basically fallen, fallen heavenly beings okay. that, that Good fell angels that from became heaven. bad? Good angels that became bad. Is that sense. because God has never, will never override any created being's choice? Right. They, they have choices. They had a choice whether to leave their domain. They had a choice whether to serve Satan or to follow Satan or to follow God. They believed that Satan could uh, override God. <clears throat> Therefore, and they made their choice. And when Satan fell, they fell with him. You mentioned Lucifer. Of course, he was an archangel. And we'll, right. we'll get into later about that. But is that the highest rank? An archangel? An archangel, right. And that archangel is also sometimes called a, a prince of God. And so that they had, he was a prince of what God had called him to do. He and the other uh, cherubim, apparently, uh, they actually oversee sanctuaries that are, that are in heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ezekiel 28 tells us that, that Satan was uh, the highest of, of created heavenly beings, an anointed cherub. It says that he oversaw the sanctuaries and the pride of his heart entered into him. And he fell because of that pride that entered into him. And he put, he put his desire to be elevated above, above God. And, of course, the Bible talks a lot about the musical instruments that were instilled into mm -hmm. his being, mm -hmm. that he was 
probably the worship leader of heaven. Probably the worship leader of heaven, and he certainly had a lot of jewels that were covering his body, or at least in the robes that he wore, mm -hmm. that covering them, incredible jewelry that was upon him, incredible precious stones that were on him. In fact, nine different stones were found upon him, wow. and, and he was covered in gold. So how could he have had enough influence to take a third of heaven with him away from God? Well, it's very beguiling. He was very anointed, very beguiling, and so he was able to convince the other angels, I can do it. I think what happened was Satan saw the, the meekness of God, the gentleness of God, the kindness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, and he perceived those things to be weaknesses, mm -hmm. and he said, I can take him. I can overthrow God and convince the other angels that these things that are actually attributes of God, uh, he convinced the other angels and other spiritual beings in heaven, not just yeah. angels, but there, as we're going to see, there's many yeah. spiritual beings there, and convinced them that he could overcome God and that if they did, they would have a place with him and high ranking with him in the new heaven, our new, new mm -hmm. kingdom. Now, the other archangels we hear a lot about in the Bible, Gabriel, mm -hmm. Michael, mm -hmm. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Are there any more that you know of? We know that there are at least, uh, at least six cherubs that are mentioned in Scripture, not by name, but they're mentioned. So mm -hmm. there are other heavenly beings. The only one that is specifically mentioned by name that is an archangel or would be called a prince of God would be Michael. Gabriel's not defined. We're not sure what Gabriel is. He sent a lot of messages, didn't he? He came back and forth a lot. He is definitely yes. in the message he, category. He brought the greatest message to the world. <laughs> yeah, he ta talked to Mary, talked <laughs> yes. to Joseph, yeah. <laughs> exactly about the birth of the, of the coming birth of Jesus. Yeah. I also talked to Daniel. And so from that, we know that angels do not, uh, we know that angels don't die. Jesus yes. himself said that we, we humans die. And when we die, we become like angels who do not die. So therefore, angels don't die. Angels were created, but they don't die. Okay, so now the Bible tells us that man was created a little lower. A little lower than the angels. Than the right? angels. And after so the what's the difference between men and angels. Well, both are created beings, but the angels were created. We can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> do angels fly? <laughs> yes, they do. They fly in heaven. It tells us actually that they do. They yeah. fly around, especially seraphim. There's no mention of them ever standing, but it is mention of them always flying. They hover mm -hmm. and they fly. Mm -hmm. uh, cherubim, must they have feet. Actually, the feet are, de are described in the book of Daniel and the book of Ezekiel. The, the feet are described so we know that they stand around the throne of God. They stand on the Ark of the Covenant, the representative on the Ark of the, on the, mm -hmm. Ark of the Covenant. So we know that both of those strange beings, seraphim has six wings, cherubim have four wings. They have f the face of a lion, the face of man, the face of an ox. Mm -hmm. Seraphim have that too, but we're not sure what the seraphim, whether they they have four heads with four different faces or one head with four different faces. Yeah. So we're not really sure from the description mm -hmm. that we're given about them. They're only mentioned twice in the Bible by Isaiah. Cherubim are mentioned 91 times in the Bible. And angels or angelic uh, spiritual beings are mentioned nearly 400 times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I always think about them when we sing the song, Holy, Holy, yes. Holy. Because this is what they do <laughs> night and day. Right, and there's a reason why they called three times. They always said holy three times. Reason why? It gives, it gives a basis for the Trinity. Holy acts of the Father, holy acts of the Son, holy acts of the Spirit. Can, a, can an angel take on kind of a human form? And Angels can take on human forms. And we know this, and they, I think it's important that we... They visit earth in human yeah. form. Sure, but yeah. then the Bible says that we can, they are so human that we can entertain angels unaware. unaware. And that causes consternation for some people because they're wondering, well, if, like one pastor told me, he said, I don't really believe you saw an angel. And I said, why? And he said, because you didn't follow this feet as a dead man. And I said, well, that's one thing that happens when they, they come in their glory. But when, what about when we entertain angels unaware? They can certainly come in human form then. Yes. What about when a Abraham and fed two angels and the angel of the Lord, and they ate, it says. So mm -hmm. they, we know that they can consume food. We know yeah. that they can fix food and prepare food because El Elijah was told right before he uh, went to the mountain, an angel awoke him and said, eat, for it's a long journey. And it said, and there was food cooked on hot stones. Wow. <laughs> and so the angel cooked the food on hot stones. So sometimes we wonder. We wonder, why didn't the angel just go, just go be cooked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or or here, have some here, have a bowl and yeah. here's some like food. Like I dream on it. of Jenny, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. Some of those things we don't have answers for, but we do know that 
that they can cook food and we do know that they can eat food and we do know that they come in such a human form that we have Don't trouble even, distinguishing them yeah. from other humans. Yeah. I remember it's been over 20 years ago, uh, Don Landers that pastored Wahawa Assembly of God there in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. And um, he told us a story of when they were starting that church there and he was a little discouraged and he's sitting in his office and you know in Hawaii they leave the doors and screens open you know because mm -hmm. it's always like 70 degrees perfect weather and he said he was sitting there and a uh, there was a little knock on the screen and there was a young man standing there tall blonde came in sat down and uh, he started talking to, to Pastor Landers and he said how are you doing and, and he started talking to him and he said the young man said so have have you been enjoying the book, Streams in the Desert? And Pastor Lander said, yes, it has been such an encouragement to me. And, you know, and starts, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, anyway, they just talked for a little bit. And basically, this young man just encouraged him. And Pastor Lander said, thank you so much for coming by. And he shook the young man's hand. And and um, he said, let me see you out. And the young man said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. He said, I just wanted to come and encourage you. And the screen door shuts. And he says, well, I'm going to walk him out to his car. And he comes to the door, nothing, vanished in mm -hmm. thin air. And, how, and then he said he started thinking, how could he have known I was reading Streams in the Desert? Oh, that's true. Oh, my how goodness. How could he have? And he knew right. that he had entertained an angel right. unaware. So they are sent at times to encourage yes, they are. the men and women of God. They are. And so I'll, I'll never forget that story. <laughs> I, and I was like, and we always get caught. I was like, what did he look like? It's like he was tall. He was blonde. Well, you know, and he was yeah. telling me, you know, he's a nice looking young man. So I love it. Wow. Well, don't go anywhere. When we come back, John Paul talks more about angels and demons and some of the misconceptions. Stay right there. Well, today we've been discussing the spiritual realm and the importance of understanding the hierarchy of power and authority. Explain that for those who are listening today, John Paul. Well, when, when all of heaven is created with authority, and so God doesn't give you responsibility without authority. So mm -hmm. angels, watchers, seraphim, cherubim, and so on, these all have authority in him because he's given them certain mm -hmm. responsibilities that they are to do. Mm -hmm. And so with that authority comes responsibility. But what happened when angels fell, when the demons fell, they lost their authority. But Michael, all the angels, the watchers, and so on that did not fall, they retained their authority. They retained authority, they retained power. Satan and the fallen angels only retained power, but they lost their authority because authority is what I call proximity-centric, meaning it's only, mm -hmm. uh, you only have authority to the degree you're as close to God. So right. they lost their closeness to God. And so, so that's how we have authority so good, is through yeah. our relationship yeah. with God. And that's how we have authority. I think it's important so to understand. So we don't have to be afraid of that power because there is demonic power on the earth there, today. There is demonic yeah. power, but authority conquers power. Jesus said, yes. I give you authority over all the power mm -hmm. of the yes. enemy or over of Satan. Yes. So authority, we know, conquers power. So it's important that we realize our authority, mm -hmm. important that we realize we have authority and power in God. Now, in, in this whole spiritual arena, it's also important to understand that only a third of heaven fell. That means two-thirds are still on our side. Twice as many. Yeah. Twice as many <laughs> as the fallen. They're so, helping on the earth, yes. even now, aren't exactly. they? Exactly. See, angels are the logistical agents of God. You'll have angels come and visit you to help you accomplish what God mm -hmm. called you to do. So what yeah. we want to do is we want to recognize God's hand. God has put us on earth to accomplish a purpose. He has given us all kinds of things to help us do that. He's given us dreams and visions and so on. Mm -hmm. He's given us gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine mm -hmm. gifts of the Holy Spirit, tongues, interpretation, tongues, prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and so on. Mm -hmm. And he's given us angels and other heavenly, mm -hmm. created heavenly beings to help us reach the purpose that he put us here. So mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not put here on earth without any help Go whatsoever. Along. We're given tremendous help to accomplish the purpose of why we're here. And, and all the heavenly beings are designed to do that. So we have, we have archangels, our, our princes of God. We have cherubim. We have seraphim. We have a uh, host. We have watchers. We have thrones, principalities, powers that are unfallen. So many times we think that because we're, we fight against principalities and powers, we think that, well, principalities and powers must be really bad. No, 
only a third fell, uh, two-thirds, there are principalities and powers that did not fall. There are, there are thrones that did not fall. There are dominions that did not fall. There are rulers right. in high places that did not fall. Too often we look at that and go, wow, all these, all these powers are against us. No, all these powers are for us. Yes. Only yes, a third, so only a third fell. Yes, that's good. You know, I, I think you think of so many stories here. I remember, do you remember when I was in, we lived in Montgomery and I had just done my very first music CD. Yes, yes. And I was about a mile or two from, from home. home. I had driven all the way from the Nashville area mm -hmm. and a drunk driver ran into the middle of the highway. Mm. Ran a and, stop sign coming and, down a hill as you were coming. Yes. yes, and I remember thinking, I was going about 60, thinking he's coming right, and I'm swerving, you know, and I hit the back end of the car mm -hmm. because he's come out in the middle of the highway. But I didn't have my seatbelt on. I had stopped to get gas. I hadn't put my seatbelt back on, and I was so close to home. Jonathan was just not even a year old, mm. and I didn't see an angel, but I physically felt mm. an angel wrap his mm. arms all around me and that car started spinning wow. and I did not move. It just held me in place and uh, the guy, the drunk driver was just a mess, blood everywhere, you know, and me, I, not a scratch, wow. nothing. And the Blood Vault Church was playing. That was, one of the, <laughs> that was one of the songs I had recorded. I was wow. listening to the, you know, the rough track. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's, that's an incident where, I mean, I know there was a you heavenly do, being that's, and there was a policeman that saw everything that was watching at the uh, convenience store. And I remember thinking, I mean, I totaled the car but didn't have one scratch. That's a miracle. It was amazing. Yes. And you have a story. You got to tell your story real quick. <laughs> I do. Because your disobedience is in there and everything. Yeah, my disobedience is, is part of my transparency. <laughs> I'm going to be transparent here. <laughs> but I was. I had bought this this pickup truck, and I was very proud of this pickup truck, and really wanted wanted it, and I waited for it. Well, uh, God God did not tell me to get it, which. I mm -hmm. probably knew, I just didn't want to admit. But uh, so I was driving this pickup truck to the, early in my ministry to, to a town of West Texas called Floydata where I was going to speak. Uh, on the way to Floydata, out in the middle of nowhere, I mean, I hadn't even seen, hadn't seen a car in an hour. I barely seen any cattle out on, out on the hillsides, like one cattle per hundred acres out there. Mm -hmm. It's so dry and arid. So the truck breaks down. The transmission goes out. I'm on the road. Lord, what are you doing to me? And, and why is this happening? And if you want me to speak in this church tonight, you're going to have to help me get there. So uh, I cried out to the Lord and uh, the Lord talked to me and, and told me, said, I didn't tell you to buy this. I didn't tell you to buy this. And so you bought it on your own. And so I said, well, please help me. I, forgive me. I'll never do this again. <laughs> help me. And about that time, out of nowhere, this car comes and he says, he says, son, where are you going? And I go, <laughs> this man in the 60s, and he's got these bib overalls on, and he says, son, where are you going? I go, uh, I'm going someplace you probably hadn't heard of. I'm going to Floyd Ada. You're probably not going there. He goes, he said, son, this is your lucky day. He said, that's exactly where I'm going. He said, he said hop in, let's drive. So as we're driving to Floyd Ada, he says, you know, when you don't listen to God, things don't work out the way you anticipated, do they? And I go, oh, man. He knew you had bought the truck. He knew I had bought the truck. I thought, who is this guy? What's he talking to me like this for? Yeah. And so I get, he takes me to the church in Floyd Aid. I get out of the car. I look at the church. He said, he said, this is where you're going, isn't it? And I go, yes, it is. I, th I never stopped to think for a moment that I hadn't told him. So I get there. I get out of the car, I look at the church, I turn back around to say, thank you, I really appreciate that, and he's gone. The car's gone, the angel's gone, everything is gone. Just in literally two seconds, gone. Wow. Just gone. That is amazing. And it, and it proves even in our disobedience, God has mercy if we yes. call on the name of the Lord. Yes. yes. I've told you, I think I told this one other time, I, I know I think I've told you this as well, Christy, that when we were in Israel and I was taping with uh, Perry Stone, mm -hmm and we were on the Palladium overlooking the city of Jerusalem, one of the Israeli crew that we had hired that, that lived there, um, while I was taping, I saw him doing his hands and gesturing and talking to, to my assistant. Well, after it was over, she, she came running up to me and she said, um, he came over to her and said, do you see him, do you see him? And he's like 12 feet tall. Wow. These four angels standing around wow. the back of where we were taping, overlooking the city of Jerusalem. And uh, it was so real to him because my assistant didn't see him, but he said, do you see him? Do you see mm -hmm. him? And I talked to him after. 
And uh, what kind of angels would those be, those real tall ones? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. They're probably guardians or something. So right. nothing interferes with uh, what you were doing. They were probably sent there to make sure nothing interfered with what you were doing. And, and another angel story that I heard from interviewing Arthleen Rippey, you know, her, her husband, Don mm -hmm. Rippey, had been a great man of God, and, mm -hmm. but had, had gotten into some error doctrinally and had, and had just, they had separated and he was going through depression. Anyway, he ended up committing suicide. Right. But uh, a lady, a year later, I guess, uh, Arthleen was in a church ministering and the Lord gave this lady a vision of the, his final moments before he passed. Mm -hmm. And at first, Arthleen was real skeptical about it. And she said, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know if I believe this or not. And she said, well, what did his hair look like? And the woman described perfectly his hair combed over to the side. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, what kind of, what color shirt? And she said, a light blue shirt. And no one had seen that scene because wow. Arthleen, the police had had to come into his apartment. They had found him. No one had seen that, hadn't been written about. But the thing that stood out to me is the lady said that in his final moments, he called out to the Lord mm -hmm. and that there were angels mm -hmm. at every door at every window, at every opening, keeping out the darkness. Wow. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yes. it is. I mean, so, mm. great, great story. They're here to story. help us. Yes. They're here to help us. They're here us. to help us. Well, yes. we've talked about demons and angels and what they are able to do. After the break, we find out what all this means to you. We'll be right back. Well, while demons fight for footholds and angels carry out their orders from heaven, we are at the center of this battle. But we should not fear because heaven is moving on our behalf. I love that. You don't have to be afraid. We're mentioning, you know, during the fall, they have haunted houses. Yeah. And then, of course, even on TV, you see the, the Ghostbusters. Oh they're going in and they're, they're putting all of these uh, uh, things out to register, you know, these sound waves and currents right. and, you know, all of that. What, what about all of that? The world is so fascinated with that, by the way. Well, there are, there are true spiritual realities out there that, that are there. Mm -hmm. There are true haunted houses. There are true, true places where demonic forces go and, mm -hmm. and have a right to because of the legal ground given them by the, by the previous owners. But the problem mm -hmm. is when we go to those houses, even if it's pretend, even if it's make believe, we are emulating darkness. Mm -hmm. And when you emulate darkness, that gives you one step closer to darkness. Mm -hmm. And so what I encourage people to do is never give yourself a foothold. Never give the enemy a foothold That's in your good. life. Never have mm -hmm. anything in common with darkness. Never have anything that you've done that says, hey, I dabbled in darkness and look, I got away with it. You know, you may not have gotten away That's with true. it because there are issues that happen when you dabble with darkness. That gives you something in common. And the Bible says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? darkness. Do not put yourself in a place where that Satan has any touch on any side. You can't walk in darkness on this side of your body and light on this side of your body. You've got to walk in a non un uncompromised way before the Lord. There's enough battles out there in the world without you having to put yourself in a place where the enemy has access to you. Or dressing your kids up with blood running down and like oh, demons right. and all of that. There's a growing problem of cutters now in the United States, yeah, in high, especially in high yes, school yes, kids. Right. And what you're finding out is a direct correlation between the amount of vampire movies they watch and the amount of cutting that goes on. Oh, There's yes. a fascination with blood that comes and it's a directly attributable to the issue of vampires and vampire movies, vampire programs. Wow, which is epidemic, right? It's epidemic and again, yes. you, you give yourself something in common with the yeah. enemy, then you have darkness. Seems so innocent and yes. yet you need to be mindful of that. Exactly. But yeah. what the great thing is, if you don't give the enemy a place in your life, if you don't allow the enemy to have place in your life, this they cannot overcome you, they cannot overwhelm you, they cannot possess you, they cannot oppress you. You have to say yes at some point to some area of darkness. You have to have fellowship with darkness in order for the enemy to have any foothold in your life. Don't let there be any place where there's something you have in common with darkness so there is no foothold he has in your life. 
What's ever things are pure? Yes. What's ever things are lovely? Good. Good Virtuous. report. Virtuous. Holy. Yes. Think on those things. Think on those right? Things. Exactly. That's important. Well, we are out of time. I want to thank John Paul for joining us again today. I know you enjoyed today's discussion. For more on this, you can pick up his CD and DVD teaching set, True Spirituality, available now at Streams Ministries. Dot com. So, more information about what we talked about today on this DVD set. Lots more information. Lots more? Ooh. Lots more. Okay, <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> True Spirituality, John Paul Jackson, for those of you that want to hear more. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Christy, hey, for being I'm here. So glad I was Kelly, here. Susie, this was good. Could we That's talk great. another hour? We could. Yes, we'll hours. see you next time. <laughs> bye bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.